there's not going to be much today. It's mostly um, some superficial research, nothing transcendent. I'm waiting for the right equipment to come to do the serious work. So this is more like superficial um, check of our trade kind of research. I'm interested in that case, but I've been saving the link for a few uh, days. Oh, it's a shepherd, okay. So that could be linked to the notion of um, rewild and trophy rewild. I'll go over that because it's an interesting um, subject, which is kind of one of my pets, um, um, one of my pets topic, if you will. I, I've gathered a lot of data on this. I, I was due to make a seminary on that uh, in Dijon, but unfortunately COVID um, stopped this. But normally I should do this I shall resume it this year, so I'll tell you when it's like confirmed. I don't know who this person is. I have, as you know, a certain number of qualms with Paul Watson due to some tacit relations he has with the dolphin air industry, indirect one, but nonetheless, um, uh, namely, uh, <clears throat> Namely, how the MGM Las Vegas uh, director, I forgot his name, gave, gave him in the 90s a subsequent sum of money, and um, knowing that he owns a dolphinarium there. And secondly, because of the um, key role in Sea Shepherd of a successful businessman called Pritam Singh, which also owns a bunch of dolphinariums, I don't remember exactly where. Um, I'll go over this in another stream. I don't, I, 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 some of my colleagues, Mila, uh, before she died, um, had a lot of difficulties with Watson, to say the least, for all the reasons. Um, I am more lenient to both him, but nonetheless I have qualms. Uh, this is not important right now. It's interesting why though. As far as I'm aware, that's the first time that a big organization like Dom, uh, um, oh, what's the word for that? Sometimes my, my brain like glitches and I forget a key word in, 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 in English that's, um, don't write, don't write um, boys as who, in order to free them residents. I'm not aware of that. Normally that's, that's an exception to the rule. Yes, okay, no. So not an exception to the, to, the, to the rule. Okay, makes sense. Basically, the zoo was in shitty conditions. Okay. Oh. 
Okay, yeah, makes sense. It's it's not an exception to the rule. That, from a financial material point of view, that makes total sense. Hmm, interesting assays of animals. Okay. Normally, when this kind of thing happens, they just send the other residents to other zoos. In France, there are more than 300 of them, so... Hmm. I don't know what to say. I mean, that will mean... Colossal means... Um, also, as you know, I have... I, I don't believe they will, like, try to free them under, like, their consent on desires on trying to communicate with the elephants or <clears throat> not trying to use some kind of behaviorist training based mantra taking in account Laurentian ethology and so they probably do the same stupid bullshit than usual and use the same was the wrist in blah blah rhetoric. I mean I'm I'm extremely pessimistic on all of that so I, I, I there's no I have no hopes up when it comes to that kind of there, there probably some kind of be some kind of sanctuary transfer at some degree. Like, I have some. My secret hope is that I could approach Lamia. I don't know how, but approach them, make true code animal because I know them and tell them, hey, you know, we have this project with the dolphin. If we succeed with them, why not using like an ultrasound version of the frequency translocation device with the elephants there? I don't know. I could try something. I, I don't believe I will be... I don't believe this will amount to anything, but hey, an, an NB can try, okay? Hmm. They're right. Definitely bet. Basically, it translates to the best. It's it's fucked that they call them like this, but yeah, it makes sense. I, I didn't knew that. That that's interesting. Mm, makes sense. That shows that it, it it shows as well that at least with highly cognitive species, we can create um, um, relations of trust and also uh, it's extremely interesting to see that in when it comes to cetaceans at least when it comes to the pro sanctuary rhetorics they will simultaneously tell you that oh if you free the cages they will you know go into the the wild and then die like shit because they don't know what they do whatever like uh, 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 swim randomly in the open and they are so the same people that tell you that they're too used to humans so they will never leave the captivity, blah, blah. Obviously, <laughs> uh, the reality is far more nuanced. Yeah, but that's the, there is no such thing as a wilderness. We will go over that, um, trying to uh, show you the pertinent uh, data on that, the different texts that were published by... Um, the people that wrote about this, namely Ramachandra Guha, William Cronon, uh, Jibber uh, Calicut, um, the whole fucking gang, we'll go over this call, obviously, as a number of anthropologists. Um, I, I, I'll go take a coffee, okay? Tomorrow we have my first uh, second semester courses in anthropology, and I'm, I'm kind of like a uh, big depressive boy phase and it's very difficult for me to send a bunch of emails and shit but hey i'm using this stream for that
I don't know who those people are. That that's fucked. That's fucked. That he was. That's that's the kind of thing. Well, first for the Sea Shepherd, that's not surprising because that's the kind of methodology they have. And secondly, um, I hope that's the kind of thing no one um, in my group or myself will ever do because I'm. Unless it's extremely well justified, I mean, I mean, how do they know this? Again, well, from a behavioral point of view, because of this idea of genetic pollution, because of possibility of illness transmission, they never justify this shit. That's what. That's why I think it. That's the fucked up part, right? There is no analytical understanding of liberty. Well, at some degree there is, because as you know, zoos are so free. <laughs> that's part of the. Contradiction, the inner I was going to say schizophrenia, but that's, um, that's a stupid expression that doesn't describe how schizophrenia works, but what I mean, which is also like validated on everything, but I mean, um, uh, Zeus free, as you know, there is in fact a certain degree of contradiction on the fact that they also free uh, non-humans populations, and they also claim that they shouldn't be free. Um, I believe that at some degree they're conscious. I mean, Zeus also collaborated with mythologists at some degree. So they know that the whole rhetoric about instinct loss and all of this shit is at some degree a falsehood. I mean, it's... Here, here again, it's not necessarily a current discourse. Most of the time it's not a, a willed, um, voluntary calculated discourse. It's more like a spontaneous conveniently use double discourse when it com when it's convenient to use a more truthful scientific analytical based discourse that recognizes that for instance there are in fact innate behavior in non-humans that cannot be lost by the effects of captivity or training or whatever that recognize it for pragmatic reasons and if they have to uh, say that you know they are like balls of reflex condition of reflex arcs on uh, uh, operant conditioning that they can uh, 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 um, modify at will, they, they, they'll say it in order to, uh, to uh, justify their activities. I mean, here again, the key point is justifying your activities as, a, as an industry. That's it. But again, the notion of relâché, which means like relâché has a, a French connotation of dropping in the middle of, like just letting, letting go. Relâché is letting go. That's retarded. Because the whole, I shouldn't say retarded, whatever. The, the whole point here is that there is a negation of any link between us and them. And that's particularly a problem when it comes to other social beings like elephants and cetaceans that we know we can talk with, that we know we can engage in, with, in, in, in dialogue, in negotiation, in political discourses, in cultural exchanges and such, that we know they can make, in theory at least, Territorial claims, uh, ownership claims. I mean, again, I will try to justify all this a posteriori, but the fact that even the question isn't posed is part of the problem. Whatever. Also, what partners, though? I'm interested in the network of organization. I'm not familiar with all of them. I'm coming, okay? Some fucking tea, okay. Mm. Yeah, it's the AZ, obviously, it's a fucking no bother. Okay, so an ethology says that. Oh. But when they say, I, again, I want justifications, I, I know that they can just. Tell stuff like that in the middle of it, but nonetheless.
could try to contact this person, by the way. I don't know. Hey, uh, there could be a person I could have on stream. Go try that. That, that's, that, yeah, could be an idea. Yeah, I could try to do that. That could be an idea. Uh, I could try to have her on stream. I will, um... Last, okay. like um, donkey, okay. Anyone that knows me know I have a lot of um, anxiety on such. That's why I have a lot of delays when it comes to uh, sending emails, finishing exams, whatever. This is um, kind of fucked in the head, whatever. My world generation is fucked in the head, so especially you now with the fucking quarantine. That's why uh, I'm with roommates. Uh, but tomorrow I should leave um, the place, so I will go back to the old place and hopefully stream there with uh, better equipment. Yeah, that's the thing though, like, not necessarily though, that's the whole point of, I hate the notion of rewilding because I don't, have, I don't like the notion of wilderness, but whatever. The notion of rewilding admits the possibility that some big megafaunal species that, again, case strategies, slow, slow, uh, 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 slow breeders, blah, blah, could in theory be um, Liberating some specific areas, for instance, in Europe, where the megafauna was extinct, and have beneficial side effects on their, their ecosystems without posing a significant danger to said ecosystem. It's complex, for instance, people that, uh, for instance, the Trophy of Wild and Extinction Group on Facebook uh, speak about that. Unfortunately, don't consider such thing as the possibility of elephant sapientship. I believe that if we have, for instance, the free elephants, it should be done by discussing with them, dialoguing with them, and trying to, 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 to have uh, their claims, their whatever. I'll go over that in a little stream. Probably, I'll, ah, that's the thing. I tried to make a stream on Lake Chariot Elephant Nature Park. As you know, I have some opposition, uh, 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 I mean, against that, but it's more complex because they're like the most progressive parties when it comes to elephant centralization while still having issues. Um, uh, I can try to bring Alecos to discuss that again, hopefully with more data. Hey, I mean, if I could try to bring uh, fucking Charlotte herself, but I don't believe so. She's not a, she's a field person, I don't believe. How do they know this? Again, that's bullshit. Again, there is extensive evidence that there is, for instance, in a grounds uh, 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 in hunting among big cats. I will go over the literature on this, but I'm extremely fucking confident on that. Like, that's true though. That's uh, the problem of uh, adapted territory is a big issue. That's, that's a, a legitimate uh, concern on the rest. But that's, it begs, it's, it's not only an issue when it comes to like Europe or whatever. It's a question as well when you go to 
specific areas in Africa where like game reserves are overcrowded. It's, it's but it's a complex issue that has to do with anthropogenic, anthropogenic activities, human non human relations. It's again we have to take everything in a, on an analy analytical network based uh, 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 ground. You can't just like drop ad hoc uh, uh, arguments like that. You need to like go on there on analyze, analyze, analyze. That's the problem with the, uh, the pro-sanctuary side. On the pro-cap side, they, they think the same way. Yeah, this is true though. Uh, this is a real concern of everyone when it comes to apes and monkeys. Uh, we will go over the literature on that. Uh, basically, when it comes to cetaceans, it's mostly moot. Uh, there is no evidence that there are such things as high scale epidemics that can be triggered by the introduction of ex captives. Uh, past liberation cases don't show that. Uh, there's a certain of reasons regarding the way that pathogenic cetaceans function, the way like illnesses transmit themselves in the ocean, blah, blah. But um, basically, when it comes to cetaceans, I'm concerned broadly. Uh, it is more of a concern when it comes to other species, especially terrestrial species. Again, we'll go over the literature. I will make some a lot of data mining on that, obviously. I know that's an ad hoc argument. And again, like the problem is not the use of those arguments. The problem is that our adversaries tend to like bring those arguments and just fuck off. Oh, there is the possibility that there could be an easy transmission. Therefore, there should be no liberation. Like instead of saying, okay, so. That's cool, but let's consider the possibility of pathogens, blah, blah, brucellosis, morbidly virus, etc., uh, 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 that skin disease, etc., try to see how uh, cetacean to cetacean transmission works. But they don't try to do that. They don't try to look at the data. They don't give a fuck about data. That's part of the issue. And also, I love that because they say that, but also they don't hesitate in some liberation cases to try to train them to hunt and such. Like, come on, the big coherent in your discourse. Either you can or you can't. Like, and I know that's bullshit from an ethological point of view, but if they have a certain discourse, they have at least to be coherent with that. Yes, but how can they say, like, they can't like learn to be white or whatever the fuck and then say they have lack like, introduction programs. Like again, we need to go into the analytics on the data, exa the exact data. Oh, that's, oh my God. That's, that sounds like propaganda. Yeah, that's, that's propaganda. I will, uh, I will, um, the fuck is Laura's Pauli? Okay, could try to cover on stream. Don't believe so, but hey, again, a man can try. Yeah, I listen to, you can't hear anything. We, we, basically, I need to install um, software and I need to reboot the computer and I want to finish. All of this before rebooting the computer, so. Mm. Mm, that's interesting. So they admit that sanctuaries have like issues when it comes to that. That's important. Yes, but why though? Like, what? Like, I'm interested in like the exact data. The problem is, they never. What? No, they're not. That's bullshit. That they probably it's, okay. They're not Siberian tigers. Um, white tigers are basically a mutation of Bengal tigers and Bengal tigers hybrids, probably. Um, that is entirely captive bred. There are no such thing as wild. I hate to say that. Um, white tigers. Uh, the person that uh, wrote the article probably uh, saw that they were white and assumed that because they were white, it had to be some kind of polar animal and, and confused them with the Siberian tigers that absolutely don't, do that, don't, do that, don't look that, whew, don't look like that.
Oh mein Gott. And, like, how is welfare not an issue here? Also, they want to free them for welfare reasons, but it has to focus on conservation reasons. But that's what it or not welfare will go into the equation. We know factually that a non-captive, non-human or human by the well will have a behavior that will be more active on more respondent than one that is. We just know that, that's basic ethology. We will go over the data on that, but that's one of the fundamental, that's, that's why a certain, again, I can be accused of being conservative or reductionist, but one of the important, one of, one of the reasons why I think it's important to return to Lawrence, which is not really a return to Lawrence, but rather to a certain initial epistemological grounds, is because with very simplest experiments on very simple observation that are obviously repeated in time and space on across species, blah, blah, you can easily see stuff like depression in non-humans and such, even in species that are very simple-minded, like in fishes and such. We will go over that, but... That's fucked, by the way, that's fucked. They're, they're not even accepting, that. listen, I don't like sanctuarization, but the fact that they even admit that they should still be like in the enclosure where they still are, it's, it's, it's kind of fucked. The hybrid thing, no, the, the problem of so-called genetic pollution is extremely complex. It's not as clear as that. The, the, the first, you, it's unavoidable. Uh, friendly reminder that both American and European basin are highly hybridized, both with their own subspecies, and even when it comes to the European bison case with cogs. So not just them, there are other like critically extinct species that we know they like kind of, you know, in order to save the species, they had to hybridize them with uh, close by subspecies, even species and such. Uh, 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 secondly, um, uh, how to put it, P population, this is something we'll try to insist if I ever have a uh, debate with people at Marino. P population dynamics is complex. Populations are not little uh, nodes that just divide from other nodes and keep being isolated forever. That That's not true. Uh, in reality, a lot of population, we can especially when we're talking of cetaceans, human and such, but not only them. Rehybridize the, some populations, like uh, 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 divide themselves, come, uh, come by again. You have a, we know that by studying, studying their genomes. We know that um, from, the, from the, uh, fossil genomics. The, the, what we call population dynamics, an extremely complex thing, is not as simple as genetic pollution, but there are specific cases where Gen so-called genetic pollution is indeed a problem like for a specific new species or uh, uh, malar dogs that were kind of introduced everywhere. So for instance, you have some species of malar dog fucking with a uh, 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 specific uh, species of uh, malar dog derived uh, um, uh, dogs in Hawaii that are endemic, etc., where you have a loss of genetic diversity. Okay, but like, that doesn't apply everywhere, and that needs to be understood analytically. And consanguinity, no, not necessarily. First, there are endangered populations that are inbred that you want it or not. And the solution to that is having them fuck with non-inbred population that will make them, well, less inbred. That you want it or not, the problem of uh, uh, hybridization in inbreeding is inevitable. You cannot... It, it just is. It just is here, especially when it comes to, like, um, the gist of it is that extremely endangered species are that you want it or not most of the time inbred on that non inbred species no sorry non endangered or lesser endangered species if they inbred shouldn't it logically be less of a problem whatever again here the problem is I don't have the exact data if I had the exact data I could discuss it but those people don't want to, to like discuss data. They want to um, they want to push for a narrative. Okay? They want to push for a narrative which is inevitably human centered, and which understand non human, non humans as a commodity. That's it.
again, what not uh, uh, transforming local environments to accommodate them, how, uh, 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 changing it, create like relations that could accommodate both parties. It seems utopical, but again, case by case, uh, 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 sense by sense, we can create something. We can go toward an effort of creating this, especially with so-called sapient species. I'm not aware of that. I will have to... Um... Yes, that's what, what I told. Yeah, that's not just them. A lot of actors do that worldwide. It's very common. That's, you know, I was tempted to do that kind of shit when I was younger, but today I'm more like, I probably, I would probably in theory expand my uh, realm, my, 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 oh, I forgot the name for that. Um, you know, when you, when you like have a, a, an atomic bomb or something on it, my reach, I could um, significantly broaden my reach if I went on Twitter um trolled specific actors, but I don't want you to do that because I don't want to have like brain cancer from Twitter, okay? I may use very specific, I don't know, I, I'm still thinking about that. Yes, I know them. Forgot, yeah. I mean, they say that, but Zeus still engage into this at a certain extent. We will go over that data one day, but... Yeah, that's stupid. Uh, Zeus, this, uh, Zeus do this all the fucking time. Um, oh, well, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, first, that's very telling because in France in particular, when there is a refuge, it tends to be used as some kind of placeholder name for like sanctuaries. But the fact that those places have like a tacit uh, a relationship with like Zeus or... Uh, uh, in France in particular, but in the rest of the world as well, um, there, there are complex relationships between Zeus and sanctuaries. The idea that sanctuaries are totally divorced from Zeus and don't like each other is not totally exact. Um, but the reproduction of captivity or in captivity of non-threatened uh, uh, species is done all the fucking time. They do this all the fucking time. There are even, they even have excess population, they euthanize this is is extremely well known. They justify it upon pedagogical or or, or, or research based arguments that that's whatever. I don't know who this person is. I'll, um... Oh, yeah, okay, uh, um, a lawyer, okay, defend that sense. Interesting. Ah, oh, interesting that he's... Uh, Wait, what? Why? Why do they want to make a rest? Okay, so what? Are they making like another zoo with like attraction, whatever? What are they talking about? So basically that's just... Why do they need all those infrastructure when the money should be used to free the... Yes, obviously, making those infrastructures to... 
to make money to feed them, but nonetheless, that's odd. Um, So, yes. Uh, Herpes in elephants is a common reflection they have. Apparently, it's um, responsible for a lot of um, young elephant death. I, I, I knew that because I made a lot of research, like years ago, on different on the different Asian population, uh, Asian elephant populations in Europe, their origin, the the death, on whatever. There are um, there is a database on captive elephant populations online in Tumblr or where. Curious about how many of them there are. Mm. Two of them at least. Mm. Whatever. Mm. Yes. Yeah, well, call me politically correct, but if we ever ever to um, to make an autopsy on a situation, we'll say an autopsy on a situation, not a fucking necropsy, whatever. Oh, yeah, I forgot that they had three stomachs, that makes sense. Um, I believe... Mm, mm, that's what I... Don't they have like a common ancestor with like bovins and shit? No. Oh, hypos, but... Okay, one main stomach, one pyloric stomach. Two main stomach, one pyloric stomach. 
So that's if it, that's not, but my guess is that it must be. Okay. Okay. I say new root. I mean, it's not stomach in the sense. Yeah. Hmm. Whatever. This is just. I just. I like to. Um, other data like that on anatomy. Mm. That maybe it's due to some kind of uh, because a lot of the water they they much of their water intakes come from food itself. So if the food doesn't have enough water. Yes, but that's not necessarily because he privileged uh, begging. That could also be because they privileged begging due to overfishing as well. That's my main theory on that. Um, I'll go over that. But um, basically, there are five sites um, worldwide where uh, dolphin begs. And uh, when it comes to Florida, we know that there are problem with so-called so um, dead zones. Uh, they're all important dead zones. Um, uh, namely Panama City Beach, Sarasota, and Savannah. In Australia, you don't have that zone, but there is a, uh, in um, Tangaluma and Shark Bay, you have problem with the loss of a key ecosystem called the seagrass, uh, the seagrass uh, meadows. Oh, uh, shit, wait. That because I make some research before. Whatever, whatever, we'll go over that. Now, this is my problem though. It's not just, first, we know that you don't just toss food to the dolphins and the dolphins don't really eat your food. We just know that most, in most cases, in most cases, dolphins refuse that food. They don't like this. That's, Part of why most of the time they die when they were captured for captivity. They near systematically refuse that food. They have to like, you have to really force them week after week to generally force them to accept to, to, to eat that food. It's not, it's not intuitive for a dolphin. And also you cannot explain why it's specifically here or not in other places. In the region where you have also resident population that don't beg. And also, uh, Savannah is the exception here because in Savannah you don't have people that go to a dolphins and give them food. It's they beg toward trawlers on small uh, fishing boats. Coming. Hey, you know what? 
Can't you pause the stream online? <clears throat> okay, so the late summer Wait what? Oh okay yeah yeah No, 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 I really don't believe so because we have good, whatever, whatever. Also, I believe there's only one dolphin, I'm not sure, I have a doubt. No, I, I'm extremely skeptical of. For many reasons, we will go over that. But again, that's what I uh, I told before. Basically, the gist of it is that most of the time, um, uh, dolphins uh, refuse that food, uh, except really in dire condition where they have no choice. You can hear the music because. Uh, Max don't have like desktop or oh, sound need to install something. Oh that's bad lofi, that's not good. Do I have like really fucking good quality jazz like 
the real one. Not some stupid shit. Or some bossa nova. I don't know, not this hipster shit. Haha, <laughs> you can hear it. Yep, it's the same. No. No, I want it lay life. Also, why this dolphin in particular, like... Oh, whatever. oh, so it started with them, and then it expanded? Basically, I will go over the shark thing because it's used by your uh, pro-caps on pro sanctuaries to justify your uh, ad hoc captivity on basically sharks that are extremely rare in stations. And, uh, but they're more common in um, a uh, shallow areas where there's not a lot of, how to put it? Okay, so basically shark attacks are more common in a tropical shallow areas, like Shark Bay, it's a good instance, and B in uh, estuary in very murky areas. And it depends on what species we're talking about, blah, blah, we'll cover that. The gist of it is that sharks are extremely fucking rare instead with cetaceans. They're not, they're not a common occurrence, that's what I'm, what I'm saying. And we don't know that from previous liberation cases as far as I'm aware, so fuck that. Yeah, sure, but what kind of interaction, in what context, that's the thing. And again, they didn't just begged for begging that's we don't find that in other coastal populations uh, i well apart from sarasota um, i believe there must be like some kind of of fundamental factor regarding the lack of you know, fish there overfishing and whatnot but we will go over the relevant data on that i know there are studies that were made for instance on how um um i believe in india uh, you have like bears Beers that search for food in like um, in garbage bins, but it's not just that they learn just abstractly to know, they do that because they don't have fucking food to eat. Yep, hello, direct data confirmation. I hate being right all the fucking time because I have a big. Very convoluted brain, like say dolphin. Yes, obviously. Oh my god. Also, it's not just red tide, it's red tide, more all the factors that are mostly anthropogenic and so on and so on. Oh, it's Sarasota, not Savannah. Okay, no, it's, forget about the I thought it was Savannah in Georgia. <sighs> really, as far as I'm aware, there are only three sites in the United States where you have like begging dolphins. There may be some kind of like individual cases, but. Yep, Australia, yep. No, not necessarily. So there, there what? Okay. So first, you have like um, those cases of dolphin-human collaboration that are well known. You have this place in Brazil, in Laguna. Two, you have, um, I believe, at least one place in Mauritania where it is where it is done. On tr on three, you have um, a certain number of places in Thailand where they collaborate not with tour shops, but with uh, what we call um, Irrawaddy dolphin, a smaller species. And uh, we know also that from like 
reports from ancient Greece and ancient Rome, you know, on the not dying like flies. I mean, you have the case of solitary, which is okay. Sometimes they die because of blood collision and say like, or because they're killed by humans that happened, but it's not necessarily all of the fucking time. Um, Fungi is a good instance of one that was able to survive 37, 37 years of, the, of human interaction. It's, there are factors, but it's not as evident as if they go to where humans, humans are dangerous, they shouldn't, therefore there should be no contact policies with cetaceans. I don't agree with that. I think it's more uh, analyt analytically and fact-related, uh, fact-driven. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't speak very precisely. <sighs> when I speak English, my brain is kind of foggy, especially at four in the morning. Corona. Joking, I don't have Corona. But, but manatees are not, well, manatees are not, I don't believe people in this more uh, or narrow sense of being sapiens or such, but manatees are not fucking dumb. They're going where the food is, I mean, and in that case, it's not the same. We're talking of herbivores, and oh, they also like lose their food source. Like manatees depend on seagrass meadows that are one of the first victims of anthropogenic factors in big estuarine areas and such. I don't feel confident enough talking about manatees, though. Yeah, put my word on that. I think it's, I don't know, it's not the, the, no, it's not the smallest species of deer in the world. The smallest species are found in Asia, I believe. Chevrotain kind of species. I don't believe it's as thin plural. I, even for non-sapient species, but especially when we're talking of cetaceans, I believe that when we're talking of cetaceans, we're forced to understand that as a more, I mean, obviously, in, in, we also know like begging, First, like obviously, beggars in every like vertical uh, 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 society, like more like I don't mean civilized, but like agriculture based uh, 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 material accumulation based society in the world. You have like beggar populations, obviously, but you can't explain begging by just oh yes, this, you know, by some kind of reflex or condition response kind of thing. You're forced to understand this under more cultural and social aspects. And you have populations like, uh, uh, it's not systematic, blah, blah. But in, in Europe, in Eastern Europe in particular, there is a whole culture of begging that was uh, uh, founded by some Roma populations. Oh, this is not cheap racism on source. This is well studied. I, mean, I can't find uh, data on that easily. And is it because like, oh, the dirty robot? No, it's because they, for concrete material conditions and such, there are population that had to resort to begging on uh, uh, um, some, some forms of con artistry or whatever. It's, it's, it's part of concrete material condition that have to do with lifestyle, discrimination, etc. the way Western societies function. This is easily, no one will deny that any human population, even when it comes to such thing as food on survi or survival, has a fundamental social and cultural grasp on it, on conceptual one. I believe it's the same for cetacean. If we have to understand cetacean as sapiens, and as cultural banks, we have to understand that there is a cultural and social and political uh, 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 aspect of that. How, how comes that people that love to go toward the idea of big brain dolphins, blah, blah, bigger brains than humans, they never consider the possibility that such behavior may uh, uh, be understood under a more social and political cultural lens. And also, like, um, for instance, you have some indigenous population that suffer from it. Uh, recently, there's a whole controversy surrounding, you have this place called the Andaman Island, where you have this threatened population called the Jarawa, which are, uh, which are Andamanese Islanders that were violently, violently colonized in the 19th century by the English. No, the islands are under Indian um, 
or property, but it's basically the same thing. And the Indian government decided to build like a, a big fucking road in the middle of their territory. And then you saw those population coming to the road and resorting to begging on such of people treating them like animals. On but what? Like Jews, they saw food and they started no, they're not idiots. They're humans. They're people with their own cultural modalities and such. But unfortunately, they were the victim of concrete material conditions where a colonizer came and destroyed the food sources, uh, 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 transmitted them illnesses, introduced them to tobacco and alcohol. Like, there are concrete shit that can be understood, even there are, say, under a more Marxist lens. Is it that different? Obviously, Satan should have complete different modalities, not technology, blah, blah. But if we have, again, if we admit that we are faced with cultural, social, political pains, we cannot understand that under simpler condition, response, reflex arc, but we just can't. It's not possible. At least we have to tentatively, ten oh shit, uh, tentatively analyze this as more social based on such. We have to. We are in the duty to. Nous, nous avons le devoir de le faire, nous n'avons pas le choix. Si nous devons les comprendre comme des êtres socioculturels, etc., nous avons le devoir de au moins chercher à comprendre ça comme une réalité culturelle. Si, if we fail to understand that under a cultural lens, then I understand that, okay, go to behaviorism, blah, blah. But even then, behaviorism doesn't work with most uh, non humans. That you can understand the environmental uh, reasons why non sapient banks like deers can resort to uh, uh, whatever. It may be different when it comes to herbivores and carnivores, though, but. I don't think. I will go over the problem of uh, physical anthropomorphism, but the gist of it is that while there are probably like innate grounds to the way humans under, uh, uh, identify a smile in objects or non-humans, etc. Uh, uh, I believe there are strong cultural uh, reasons why. Basically, before the 60s, no one talked about the dolphin smile or the dolphin being cute. That does, I will go over that in another stream, but probably a research stream. Yeah, but Satoshi are not wild animal wing, whatever. Or whatever, I can't impugn people from being not walk on specific matters like that. I mean, yeah, that's that's fucked, though. That's completely fucked. But that's not just about the. It it goes beyond just an understanding of like wilderness or whatever. It's also an understanding of domination, power relations, blah blah. I mean, ownership, which is part of why the notion of wilderness is so fucked because it paradoxically implies also a relationship of power and ownership. Yes, but the understanding of this as a nature show is part of the problem. Like as if like if humans had to understand on humans as a form of delivered entertainment and they're like, come on. Ah, uh, uh, there were cases like that. I know the dossier, there were cases like that, okay? I don't think that's so, uh, I think it's more complicated. I don't believe it's just a cuteness factor. I think there's a strong power factor. That obviously, I mean, if I was dying of hunger on well, whatever, Also, that tends to deny the reality of, again, uh, also, that's important. Uh, even the most friendly and um, uh, uh, um, cuddly uh, solitary situations don't accept uh, uh, food. Uh, Randy never accepted food. Fungi never accepted food. That's extremely fucking important. Because anyone that tries to make a correlation between, like, Citations that accept doubts and citations that accept food, like, no, that's, empirically that's not true, by the way. Yeah, okay, 
monkey me, etc. But that's again, they're not the same uh, dynamics, underlying dynamics that for solitary situations. This is easily demonstrable, by the way. Anyone that has a good uh, 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 understanding of the dossier when it comes like to solitary cetaceans on penguin populations, now they're distinct in terms of like structurally speaking, they're not the same phenomenon. And they're also distinct from like populations that collaborate with um, humans for hunting. I never heard, for instance, of even cetaceans, as, as far as I'm aware, they, they mutually uh, cultivate a certain relationship of distance. Never heard of like Laguna dolphins being struck by local fishermen, I... Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that confirms it, yeah. Okay, that's, 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 that's normy shit, I mean, that's not interesting. Yeah, I believe this is probably, this probably has some kind of innate, uh, Evolutionary driving ground. That's, try, that's what I try to argue about. I, I, I need more elements to try to um, be more confident on that, but nonetheless, I'll, we'll go over that on the stream. I believe it was probably pollution now. But, oh my God. yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, what can I say? This is boring though. No, no, this is boring. I'll probably go over this in another stream. That's... No, because again, the thing is most dolphins don't accept food and handouts. Uh, the fact that solitaries don't is... Yes, okay, yes. If you want really to go into the lore, it is true that in some cases, not just dolphins, like some orcas and spermoid populations do that as well. There are some populations that learned that to... Um, basically eat the dead fish that came out of trawlers. The difference is, A, they don't seem to entirely base their diet on dead fishes from trawlers, only partially. B, it probably can be understood from like overfishing. And C, it's fresh dead fishes, not like frozen fish, which is the big, it's a big fucking difference, by the way. This, this is apparently confirmed by something that was in Monkey Me, you know. I forget the weird creatures. Oh, sorry, I get triggered over political correct shit. Um, yeah, here's the thing. So, the shit, the shooting dolphin thing is not just because they respond to the shooting dolphin thing is an old old tradition that exists at least since like 1900. Okay, there were uh, 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 we know that there were like. Uh, um, organized uh, hunting tours in Texas to shoot dolphins, etc. Uh, uh, there were cases uh, uh, last year. I mean, it's not, there's also a tacit tradition of, in some places in Europe on the United States of like Don Wall shooting dolphins, either for fun or even pro possibly for food. The gist of it is that it's a simplification of a more complex phenomenon that has to be understood into a more social, contextual, and political reality. But we need first contact people. I mean, without this, I mean, we're fucked. I'll, whatever.
that's kind of fucked. Whatever. Seriously, oh. The over-sexualization of dolphins and about the idea of sexualization in the sense that, oh, we like to touch them, blah, blah, and then on the stomach dolphins have some kind of sex-obsessed beast, as they say, is honestly part of the problem. We'll go over the data, but the gist of it is that there was, there were real exaggeration when it comes to like the propensity of, especially torsion dolphins, to want, wanting to have sex with like divers or whatever. There are cases, but... Okay, yes, for instance, some solitaries, not all of them, but some solitaries had a propensity in the first in the first cases of interaction, some of them, especially males, had a propensity toward having erections near divers and trying to hump them in they never penetrated them by the way, just humping them in a more in a kind of ritualistic way. Okay, you see stuff like that, but when they see that humans don't like that or they reject them, they stop. For instance, Rand distorted this when he first interacted with humans back in 2001. And after like even some days, he stopped when he realized that people dislike this. Now he never did that with Frédéric Pichard or whatever. So, or, or me or whatever. Was pre oh my God, I hate that. I hate that. It was pre apical beast. And then people attack me for making parallels to racism, but like there is clearly some kind of specific conception of the dolphin as a figure in popular culture in the West that is very specific and has its own modalities. You can't deny that. I mean, As I said, I don't have any fucking fascination for dolphins as some kind of... I, I'm not interested in dolphins as such. I'm interested in the political reality of the problem. And, you know, if there wasn't the world situation thing, I would probably work either in arts or in science relating to biology. I mean, when I will be like 90 years old, if I ever reach that age, my dream will be like to create some kind of landscaping stuff using ecosystem a modification work of art that will be my, like my stuff in cinema entertainment that will be like my dream that I'm, I'm not that interested in cetaceans as such it's really the political north that interests me like what is that though is this is this from Janus fuck Oh. Russell Mayno. Oh, that's from the Dolphin Embassy, okay. Wait, what? I don't believe they, they wanted to use frequency translocation. I wouldn't know if this was the case. Dolphin Embassy is a floating communication station conceived to maximize close human dolphin interaction on a long term basis in the open sea environment. We have designed a dual, oh fuck, a dual hulled craft that will be home, a studio laboratory to a crew of artists and scientists, inter oh shit, interested in, in relating to play with or learning from the dolphins. The success of the interspecies communication experiment. We'll be aided by recent technical advances such as miniaturized communication hardware, wireless biological sensors, and seagoing computers. 
but beyond it, so that probably means that they wait what the fuck so yeah 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 those people told about frequency translocation because look look at the schematics here oh fuck okay oh, concentrate okay so wait I'm, I'm going to take some tea because okay That will be big though, because I'm not, I wasn't aware that there was, wait, so, oh fuck. So first copyright 1977, that means it predates Janus. That's important because that means A, there is a project that considered the possibility of using computers before Janus. I wasn't aware of that. And B, it means possibly here that someone else uh, uh, considered the possibility of, uh, of simple frequency translocation. Pos it, will, it was probably not as simple because they wanted to use computers, whereas in our case, we believe that a simple use of an analog machine or even a, 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 a or, um, software design radio, which, yeah, okay, on paper it's a computer, but not like the computer like the one I'm using right now with a complex software can be used instead. Uh, basically, the two prototypes I'm going to use uh, are a hybrid between uh, analog on a digital device. It has a certain number of widgets. We we'll hopefully uh, will be able to confirm or infirm a certain number of hypotheses when it comes to that. On if I fail, and I will test them on two individuals, one Randy, and two um, the local one, two individuals, 32 inter um, on paper, um, the local uh, 31 population saying, on if it fails, I don't believe it will. I believe some kind of dialogue will be established. But if I fail. I will try to modify the machine a posteriori using stuff that approximates what people like Herzing or, or, or fucking Sogarman or whatever do. I don't believe it will be the case. I'm extremely confident we will at least succeed partially, but hey, we will see. We will see, people. Oh, okay, so... The success of this interspecies communication experiment will be added by recent techni uh, technical advancements such as miniaturized communication hardware, wireless biological sensor on seagoing computers. <clears throat> but beyond the technical benefits of a smaller, mo more mobile laboratory, we would utilize a fluid approach to scientific stuff. Oh, what the fuck is itself? Our vision of l life on the ocean frontier is a synthesis of art and science through which we hope to create a deeper understanding between the species. Okay. Basically, I don't believe that making extremely complex fancy projects is a good idea, but hey, on paper, I like what they do or what they did. Oh, is Bollinger uh, 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 alive? Because I would like to have him. No, I believe he's dead, right? I believe he's dead. But I would like to have someone from... Yeah, he's dead, right? No, Doug Michels, okay. Not Margaret. Margaret was the other one.
I think the mixer died, right? Yeah, oh my god. Oh well. Yeah, that's the um interesting zoo politics. Well, I I know we 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 went over that article. Nonetheless, I want to um wait as logic a trade begins. Oh, 73, that's why right, Prince Janus, okay. At the time, I believe um, Lily had lost any interest in dolphins. He was into the uh, isolation um, chamber experiments on the LDS and everything. I believe so, if I'm not wrong. Oh, I could try to contact Chip Lord. Chip Lord. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a piece of shit. Why not, though? Eh. Yeah, I could do that. I could try to contact him, send him an email, tell him... Mm. Ah, wait. That's interesting. I like this one. It's very Rico Morty-esque. Today talk about the device. Because... Mm, wait. So, um, kind of phones. Yeah, yeah, no, that's retarded. So, why? Okay, okay, so that's interesting. So, it says 77. That doesn't mean that what was done in 77 that could have been done in the 80s, post uh, or Janus, but with the original copyright for, from, for the project done in 77, although the design looks more like something from the ass of the 70s rather than the 80s. Secondly, why image synthesizer? Why image? Because that makes me think that it's very similar to one of the iterations of Janus, which will be like showing sound like a picture to, to the computer. But that seems... Wait, 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 I don't, I don't get it. So what? So Janus just took stuff from Dolphin Embassy? Or maybe it's possible that Lilin is, in his later work in the 70s, terrorized a form of proto-Janus and then 
before he made Janus, the dolphin and bassist of, came and took stuff from Lily, so I don't know. I, I can read that shit. I fucking can read that. It, it, This, this here, the, the touch panel on everything, that seems very, this is of no use, by, by the way, but that seems, like the idea of a video display on taking the frequency, like it seems to be a hybrid between what we want to do with frequency translocation or some of the Lily stuff, although there was some degree of frequency translocation of the Lily stuff. Um, it's a not hybrid between Janus and what we want to do, as far as I'm able to interpret. I'm curious about what Russell can say about that. Obviously, it's very little inspired, but... I hate the notion of utopy. What I'm trying to do with Randy, be extremely focused on what I'm going to say. This is important, okay? Even if there's like zero person watching right now. <laughs> um, th what I'm trying to do has nothing to do with an utopy. It's not utopical, okay? This is concrete, material, driven shit that can be a conscript in time and space. This is not utopy. I'm not trying to make, to make a utopy. There is nothing utopical in what I'm trying to do. Nothing. What I'm trying to do is an extremely concrete, ex extremely specific, extremely identifiable uh, uh, operation that I hope will lead to some change and stuff and magnificent discoveries, blah, blah. But there is nothing utopical I want to say. Because the problem with the notion of utopy is that it's like there is something here. You're on point A, okay? And there is point B. So instead of trying to reach point B, you, you, you um, yeet point B super far into a point you know you can't reasonably reach. But with the idea of reaching it one day, etc., it's a projection, okay? It's a, a notion of fantasized projection. When you fantasize on something, when you make a projection, the whole point of the projection is to never reach it. It's very Zizekian, but it's like this. It's mm, battery issues. One sec. Yeah, good idea. No, I was thinking of something else.
take off from there. I'm sorry about the lag. Um, hopefully, I will de delete some. Um, Purchase, mm, go try. Oh, okay. Uh, thought I could like uh, buy a, a, a version of that poster on hung out, hung it out in my home. Anonymous donor. Okay. How about you? Uh, just like dolphin is. Yeah, that's a uh, common. I mean, I don't like that notion of dolphin is because. It's more than probable that there are like thousands and thousands of different languages uh, of those, uh, among those populations that probably could be classified from a grammatical or structural point of view. I mean, whatever. Like this monolithization of what a dolphin makes, how a dolphin may walk is part of the issue, whatever. Yeah, I remember them. <laughs> That's that's a nice that's a nice story by the way. It's very interesting, as a fable on both as a form of early science fiction. I like it. <laughs> that's interesting. But we will go over uh, transhumanism, the possibility of using brain computer interface with cetaceans. It's nonetheless symptomatic of a certain form of paternalism that that could be interesting for my uh, website for the website I, I, i'll put it on the website later i mean no fuck animality i mean this has nothing to do with animality animality doesn't exist it's a constructive notion innocence and playfulness what the fuck do they mean by innocence and sometimes some dolphin population can kill porpoises for fun and shit. They're as fucked as us. They just have different material conditions. They're people. They're imperfect. That's the whole point. The enlightened aspect of humanity really is scientific curiosity and technological innovation that enlightened. I'm not a total anarcho primitivist, but I think that some stuff that anarcho primitivist.